I need you to operate by faith. Yeah. I need you to do something that is not, not going to feel good. All right. I need you to bake me some bread. Yeah. He never asked for a cake. He asked for some bread. Right. Come on. But this woman was so desperate for a miracle. She knew she was in the company of the gift of God that she said, I can't just bring him what he asked for. I got to manifest a cake. I'm going to put a little sugar in this thing. I'm going to add a little more to it. I'm not going to just come to church with my faith. I'm going to add a little praise with it. I'm going to add a little expectation with it. I'm going to add a hunger to it. I'm going to add a thirst to it. Because I believe God's going to give me a miracle because I have a man of God in my life that's going to bring me into recourse. And the Bible says when she came, baked the bread. She didn't know what he was going to do with it. She thought he was just going to have some good uh, party with her before she died. He says, now give me a piece of what you thought you need to survive. Yes. Your light bill. Yo, y'all come on. Y'all ain't going to go there. Come on. What you think you need to survive. I want you to give me a piece of what you think you need to survive by faith. And your faith is going to access a miracle in your life. She gives him a piece of cake. He eats the cake, turns around, sees that her bonds are filled. Then a couple days later, a child dies upstairs. She goes back and get him. She called Elijah, comes back because he knew that God was going to move in her house. So he went and laid upon her child, reconciled him. At this time, there was a prophetic word that was spoken that said there ain't going to be no more rain. So he's going through a course of time and a period where he's in need, but at the same time, he's called to bring, come on, something to people who have been in lack and want and been desperate for such a time. And so the Bible says, as he leaves her house, goes to the next assignment, we see that God sees him in the alley with a piece of meat because by this time, Elijah is beyond milk. He's beyond bread. He needs some meat. And this is where we get ready to go because the Bible says he went in the strength of that meat. Come on, somebody. He's beyond just the simplicity of the gospel. He's beyond just the simplicity of scripture. And now he needs something else in his life that's going to cause him to sustain when he's going through a drought, even though he's called to give people something with him. He himself is battling with what he don't have. Have you ever been in a position where God told you to give to somebody and you needed something on your own? Come on, God was challenging you to move beyond where you are. Come on, and move to where you ought to be. And so he's going through all these encounters. And he finds himself having gone to a point where he, he still, he has been through this period where the drought has been for three years. And now God says, I'm going to cause it to rain. Now go to Ahab. And he goes to, he goes to meet Ahab to release the prophetic word that it's going to rain. Something is getting ready to happen. Something is getting ready to manifest. But I got to go to Ahab because there's some stuff that's in his company that's got to stop before the rain comes. Yeah, yeah, Listen yeah, to neighbor yeah. say, neighbor, before God manifests the rain, there's some stuff he has to stop before the rain comes. Yeah, Listen to neighbor say, neighbor, before the rain comes, there's some stuff God got to stop and bring to cease. Lord, all this stuff that we have going on internally that stops the move of God, God has to bring that to a stop. He has to stop some things that are stopping the move of God from coming alive in our life. Have you ever wondered how could you be in church and you're saved and you're not smoking and drinking and you're not going to the club, but you're still struggling spiritually because there's something in your life you need to get rid of that's stopping the move of God from coming full to fullness in your life. You might be saved and not a cusser, but you might have jealousy and envy and strife and malice in your life. Can't stand to see God use somebody else. Can't stand to see God move through somebody else. So God got to stop some things in your life before he can cause the rain to manifest. So he gets to Ahab's house, talks to him. Obadiah is afraid to go talk to Ahab because he's afraid of his life. He brings his resume up to Elijah. Elijah says, man, trust God. You ain't going to die. So he gets to the point where he meets Ahab face to face. And Ahab acts 
Are you the man that's causing all this trouble in Israel? Are you the one that's causing this great revolution in the church house? Are you the one coming against everything that we're doing? Are you the one that's stopping the falsehood from being, come on, to fullness in the house of God? Are you the one that are challenging all the stuff that's happening in Israel? Elijah says yes, and I've come to you face to face this day to tell you that if we're going to go to another dimension of power, if we're going to see a move of God in the earth, you yourself got to stop this Baalim, Baalim, Baal worship in the house of God. You yourself got to stop the prophets from being false prophets. So he calls a prophetic showdown and he brings all the prophets. We're just walking through the scriptures. I'm going to walk a bit. He brings all the prophets to a prophetic showdown, a prophetic battleground. And he says at the prophetic battleground, we're going to see what God is really real. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And so he calls out the false prophets and he says, I want you to go first. So what we're going to do is, we're going to build an altar to the Phoenicia. And at this altar, we're going to have wood on the altar and we're going to make it a little interesting. We're going to put a little water on the wood because it's not easy to bring fire to water down wood. This is not going to happen through logic. This is not going to happen, come on, through scientific discoveries. No, this ain't coming that way. We know this is going to have to have, require some real power. And I believe a prophetic showdown is coming in the house of God. But some people are going to really challenge whether you got power or you got a bunch of mouth, a bunch of church talk, a bunch of church bragging talk. Folks are getting ready to challenge the powers of God. And the Bible says, he says, we're not going to even prophesy to people. We're not going to call a prophetic conference and prophesy to people. We're going to prophesy to wood. And if the fire, if the wood can respond to your word, then certainly people will respond to your word. We're going to prophesy to wood. Sometimes God will challenge you when you're in a drought. I know people that's here will prophesy to the chairs until you get some response. Prophesy to the air condition. Prophesy to the walls. Prophesy to the blinds until something happens. And the Bible says at this prophetic showdown, come on, the Bible says the 400 prophets, as they assemble themselves together in some corporate fictitious unity to bring some fictitious move of God in the presence of Elijah, the Bible says as a period of time goes by, there was no fire that responded to their ministry. After a certain amount of time in ministry, we ought to see some fire coming from behind you. After you've been here for so long, honey, you ought not to have water dripping from you every five minutes from your tears because you're crying because of everything you're going through. But there ought to be some fire coming from behind you. Come on, you hear them say, after being in God for such a period of time, you ought not to be battling with jealousy and envy and strife and malice. You ought not to be battling with that after being in God for such a long time. What's wrong with you? What has happened? Do you got a move of God or do you have a move of man or a move of church in your life? And so, the matter says after they prophesy and they come over and get to prophesy to the wood and even the wood didn't respond to their ministry. Oh, y'all come on, y'all come on. We got out of here. The wood didn't even respond to their ministry. Not even the water responded to their ministry. Elijah began to talk to them and say, well, what's happening? Is Baal on vacation? Have, have he abandoned you? Come on, somebody. Is he not here? Or is he not going to show up? How long do we got to wait for him to come? And the Bible says, after a period of time, they begin to cut themselves out of frustration. And Elijah said, stand to the side. Let me talk to God for real. Because I got a real prayer life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a real fasting life. I'm not just here to pray church. Honey, I've really been before God. I've really talked to Him. I've really sucked with Him. And I know there's a move of God getting ready to happen out here because there's a move of God happening in here. Oh, yeah, listen, there will never be an external move until there's an internal move. Somebody said, I need a move of God up in here. And the Bible says, as He does this, he calls on God, and when he calls on God, fire comes down, and the fire of God begins to boil the water and the wood at the same time. I told my church on the other night, that was the first time we saw hot water. 